Welcome to Lunch of the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We are continuing our series of studies here in 1 Peter chapter 5. We'll be looking at starting at verse 5 this lesson. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15 verse 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Verse, verses 5 through 7 of First Peter chapter 5 deal with the humility of the saints. So verses 5 through 7, we're starting verse 5 this lesson, but 5 through 7 deal with the humility of the saints. And Peter here begins and he says here in verse 5, Likewise ye younger... Submit yourselves unto the elder, yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Now, in he says here, likewise, and likewise here refers back to the elders who were to be an example of servanthood, feeding and caring for the flock. So he says here in chapter 5, verse 1, the elders which are among you I exhort, and he exhorts them in verse 2 to do what? To feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being an example to the flock. So this is what Peter is exhorting the elders back here in uh, the previous verses. So he says, likewise, as the elders, as the elders are to be uh, faithful uh, servants unto the flock that God has given to them, so also, likewise, uh, therefore the younger that Peter is referring to here are to be humble and to, to serve others also. So he says, likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. And this Greek word here for submit is hupotasso. And hupo means under, and tasso means to arrange or to rank under. And it's a military term, and it's in the passive voice and in the imperative mood. Now the imperative means that it is very it is very important that we do this for the health of the body of Christ to grow and to function properly. In order for the body of Christ not only in your local church but worldwide to function properly there needs to be humility, and it is imperative that there is humility amongst the believers in the body of Christ. Passive voice means that as the elders, as the elders produce the action of leading and guiding us, then we in turn are to receive. Passive voice means we receive their guidance and counsel, and we honor them. So, he says here, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. So as elders produce the action, then we receive the action. We, we passively receive the action of submitting to that. Now, it says here, Submit yourselves unto the elder. Now, in the context, it is referring to an older person, to an older man or an older woman. And this, this word elder here is not referring to the office of an elder. We can see an example of this back in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, and verse 1 says, Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, 
and the younger in the younger men as brethren. Now in verse 17 of 1 Timothy 5, it says, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. So, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 1, talks about an elder. And in verse 17 also, he mentions an elder also. But, in verse 1, Paul is referring to elder as in age. In verse 17, Paul is talking about an elder, but he's talking about the office of an elder. Two different things. The, the, the age of the elder, talking about their age, and then the office of an elder. Well, Peter does the same thing here. In verse 1 of 1 Peter chapter 5, he's talked from verses 1 through 4, he's dealing with the office of an elder. In verse 5 here, he's talking about elder people, older men, older women. So he says here, likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. And then he says here, yea, all of you be subject one to another. Now, this is how the body of Christ is to function. Every single office in the body of Christ is to be based on humility. Whenever a person with a sinful nature is appointed or called to an office, whether it be a bishop or elder or song leader or Sunday school teacher or Sunday school superintendent, whatever it is, there is always the temptation to lift themselves up above the brethren and to rule and to think of themselves more highly than they should. And this is, as I mentioned a few lessons ago, because of the old sin nature within us, there is that tendency to want to usurp authority and want to, to puff ourselves up and to be in a position of authority over people. And, and in the body of Christ, it cannot be this way. God did not design the body of Christ to function this way. There has to be humility one to the other. Your number one function, if you are called to a position of authority in the church, in the local church, or in the body of Christ, your number one function in that office is to do what? It is to serve, to serve. And if you are not serving the flock of God, but think that the flock should be honoring and serving you and your ideas, then God is not honored and he will not bless you in that office. He will not bless you in that office if you take that office that, that's given to you and you use it to usurp your authority, your opinions, your ideas. Now, you can have opinions and authorities, uh, opi I'm sorry, opinions and ideas, and, and use them, but there's a difference in, in, in expressing your opinions and your ideas with, a, with, a, with a, uh, uh, the idea of, of that this has to be this way because I'm in this position, or in a humble way, expressing your ideas and opinions with humility. Remember, when Rehoboam in the Old Testament, Rehoboam took over being as king uh, after his father died, uh, after uh, Solomon died, Rehoboam became king. So when he became king, what happened? He gathered unto him the, uh, the young people, the people that were his own age, and he said, uh, how should I treat the people? <laughs> and the people, the people, his companions, the people who were, who were his age and friends with him, whatever, they said, rule them with a rod of iron. <laughs> Show them who's boss. That's right. You tell them that my pinky's going to be bigger than, than my father's hand, right? Something like that. <laughs> right? And, uh, but then, but then Rehoboam said, all right, hang on. Uh, you know, let's get the older people. 
that were, and so the wise men that were saw Solomon and were with Solomon and heard the wisdom of Solomon, they, they uh, uh, counseled Rehoboam to, listen, if Rehoboam, if you love these people and you serve them and you give your life to them, they will love you back. And, and they will give everything for you. If, if you show them that, if you show them that you love them and care for them and you're willing to give your life for them, they will, they will lay down their lives for you. And the Bible says Rehoboam said, ah, the heck with that idea. <laughs> I'm going to go with the other one. Uh, he, he, he sided with his old sin nature. He sided with that old sin nature, wanting to rule and reign over people and have an authority. And it was taken from him. God stripped them from it. Paul said the same thing to the Philippians in Philippians chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. Fulfill ye my joy that ye be what? Like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness, in a, in a, in a humble mind, do what? Let each esteem the other better than themselves. This is humility. Esteem the other person, the other Christian, better than yourselves. In Ephesians chapter 5, Ephesians chapter, chapter 5, verse 21 Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. And also in Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 12 and verse 10, it says, Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love. In honor, doing what? Preferring one another. In honor, preferring one another. You know, the body of Christ thrives on humility and it dies without it. The body of Christ thrives on humility. But without humility, the body of Christ dies. Examine your own life and see if you are exercising humility in all areas of your life. And what areas are you doing good in? And what areas do you need more grace from God in? There are areas of our life where we, where we, we are, we are expressing humility, but there's other areas where we don't express humility so, so good. And we need, we need the grace of God to help us to exercise humility in all areas of our life. And I'll finish the lesson with this here. He says, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. Clothed. Clothed here is, is egkomboma. Egkomboma. And this Greek word means to bind on. It refers to the binding or the tying of an apron that slaves would wear. So he's saying like, like bind, you, 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 you tie on an apron, like, like a, a, a woman in the kitchen going out to cook, she wears an apron, she ties this apron on. And, and every Christian in God's, is, is God's bond slave. And we are to bind around us humility and to serve the body of Christ. First, first, listen, first, you are God's bond slave. And second, you are the servant of the body of Christ. So he says, be clothed with humility, bind it around you, tie it around you. In your heart, listen, in your heart, tie on the apron of humility. The Greek word for humility, taipino frosune, taipino frosune, and it means lowliness in mind. Bind around your mind 
like an apron, bind around your mind the mentality of humility. Already, listen, already decide that you will seek to be humble by the grace of God. Because that's, that's, how, that's how the body of Christ functions in this world. The God designed the body. Jesus said, I didn't come to rule over you. I came to serve you. When Jesus came in the human body, and he was here for 33, 33 and a half years, whatever, he came as a servant. He came to serve, not to rule. He, he's coming again. The next time he comes again, he's coming to rule and reign. But the first time he came, he came as a servant to serve, to, to wash the disciples' feet, to give his life for these, for these people, for, for, for the world. And so also we are to bind in our, around our mind, taipino fosune, a, a, a hump of the lowliness of mind. And that's how the body of Christ functions and is healthy when people are humble one to another. And without humility, the body of Christ dies out. Okay? Until next lesson, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.